skew lines. Now in this case, we're looking to find the shortest horizontal distance between the skew lines AB and CD. Now if you'd like to try the precise drawing yourself, here are the XY coordinates for, the two, for all these lines that I'm using. All right, XY line in the middle of the page, there we go, and zero just there. Okay, now the geometric principle we use to solve these is that if a line is parallel in, any, in one view, it's parallel in all the other views. Of course, skew lines aren't parallel because by definition, a skew line is a line that doesn't intersect or isn't parallel. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this by making another line. Now we're going to make it, basically going to take one of these lines and make a plane out of it. All right, so we're going to add a third point and that point outside here, so let's say it was there on A and B, this is going to be parallel to CD. Now you have four options because you can come from any one of the points. If I came from here in A, all right, I would be going parallel to CD, so it'd be up here, okay. If I came from D, the new point would be parallel from AB, so it'll be over here. They all work. We're going to choose one that fits fairly nicely in our drawing. In this case, actually, if I come down from B here, I can see it's going to sit just there, so it's nice and tidy. All right. Now, we're going to look horizontally for part of this. So the first part of it is come off horizontal. I'll come back to that in a little moment, but it is going to make it easier later on. So somewhere along that edge is going to be our new point that we're going to call O and it is going to be parallel to CD. There we go. And this is such an important little point, I think we'll even celebrate it with a new color. Here's a nice green for you. Okay, so there we are. That finds us our fifth point O. Oh my God, I love skew lines. And it is parallel to CD. All right. Okay, grand. Step two, find O in the plan. Well, first part of that is nice and easy. O has to be, we can just project directly down. I know somewhere along that line. And the second part, we're going to use this little bit of information that BO is parallel to CD. Okay, so there is CD. My set square out of the way. So we have a starting set square set up for CD, and there we go from O. So we can now draw in BO again. So there is O. It's just a little reminder. BO and CD are parallel, so they're parallel in all of our views. Now, this brings us back to our line AO, and this is a very useful one. I send this right out here. AO is a horizontal line. So what we're going to look do now in elevation is we're going to look along AO. Because it's horizontal, we're going to get an auxiliary elevation. So instead of looking this way to see the elevation, we're going to swing around and look this way, still horizontal. So we can take all of our heights from here. So if we're looking along AO, our X1, Y1 is perpendicular to that. If we just come a little bit out from the drawing, so we have some space to work in. And there we go. X1, Y1. All right. Now, where is A and O? Well, it's this height. Now, you could have used the measurements if you want a slightly easier life, but since I don't happen to hand, I am going to use the compass. So there we are. And that point there is A and O. Sometimes in the solutions you'll find they just call this A, but actually it's kind of helpful to think of it as being both A and O. Remember, we're looking along the AO line, so when we take a line and we look along it, it ends up being just a single point. And that single point contains both A and O. Okay, and you'll see this one, these are both the same heights here, so it has to work out that way. Now, let's get the rest of them. So we'll line ourselves up. And then we can just go parallel. So I can see D is going to be pretty close. So I don't need to draw a huge line here. It's going to be somewhere around there. 
uh, I can see, see it's going to be miles away and I'm probably going to have to extend this line. And B is quite high as well. Okay. Yeah, just in case you do get a bit confused over where some of these heights come from, we'll use a lovely blue for it. So that's distance there, called H1. And that's where we got that from. This is great practice for your auxiliaries in general. Okay, so using the same principle, let's work through them all one by one. There is B. And B's line is this guy here. Label as we go to avoid any silly little mishaps. And there is C, nice and big over here. C appears to be slightly off camera, so we're just going to readjust. And there you are. Okay, and finally D. Now what I'm expecting is two parallel lines. I'm going to think about why, if you can figure it out in your head. And the key to figuring this out is to think what are we really seeing? It's not so much that we're seeing a, B, and C, D, although we are, what we're really seeing is B, O, and C, D, okay? B to O, C to D, which are parallel in one view, so they're parallel in all the views. A happens to be in there as well. All right, so now we have all these ones. Quick little cross check. This is your little sanity check. Am I seeing them as parallel lines? And yes, happy days, I'm on the right track. Okay, so... This is where the skew lines questions can split off into two different forms, either the horizontal distance or the perpendicular distance. So in our case, it's the horizontal distance, which means we're looking horizontally. So horizontally is just along the X1, Y line, because that's our ground. So we're going to look this way, all right, which means our X2, Y2 is going to be perpendicular to it. So line that up there, and we'll just I'm going to bring our X to Y to fairly close, just to try and keep you in camera. Okay, so this is perpendicular to X1, Y1. Now, we're looking along it. So we're going to project a line parallel to X1, Y1 for each of these points. Okay, now this is getting be pretty big and I don't want to drive us mad by coming off camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a datum line. All right, which means over here, we'll just check actually if it fits. There is my biggest one there from C, which would put C up here. Uh, I think we'd actually just get with it. Well, then we'll stick with it to avoid confu any confusion. Now, this is a bit that confuses people. So fortunately, we do have a red pencil. We'll use it for... for uh, B to make it not too dramatic. So the way I get my heights in a second auxiliary is here. Okay, H2. All right, from the X1, Y1 to point and plan. So taking that height, all right, that's coming off point B. Make sure you don't confuse them. There it is there label as we go. We'll just put a little bit of red pencil in here so you can see where it comes from. Okay, now we have the idea. Repeat for the other points. So I'll get C first. Normally if I was doing this on my own and I knew what I was doing, I would go from the biggest ones first to make sure everything fits. Just make sure 
in case I was having a problem, I'd know it early. See how accurate our little finger swipe was. See, and we are fitting nicely. Okay, great. That clock was a red pen committing suicide, but it's okay because you now know how all this works. There's D. Simplest way to screw it up at this point is not to label your points and confuse them by accident, which would be a shame because you've done all your hard work and we want to see it go to waste. And there is A all the way up here. And that's fitting on camera nicely. Okay, connect the lines. A, B, and C, D. And we don't need to care anymore about O at this point. So we can see that the point at which they actually overlap is here. All right, so we can bring that back. Okay, so we're just going from X to the second auxiliary back to the first auxiliary. There we are, all the way back. And that right there is our shortest distance. Now we can mark this exciting development with our lovely orange pencil. There we go. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now, you've got to be careful at this point because what you'll often be asking these questions is to show the projections of the shortest distance, which basically means draw on the elevation, draw it on the plan. All right, not so bad, we just got to do all our auxiliary stuff in reverse. Well, to draw a line, we need two points. We have one there, we have one there. Let's bring them all back. Okay, now we just got to be careful we're getting the right ones here. So this is the CD line, which is there. Actually, if I go back look at the first one, it's of course on the AB line, which means I need to go a little bit further and hit that line there. So there is my point. There, there. And we can draw in our projection of the shortest distance, shortest horizontal distance, which is there. Okay. Now, almost there, back up to the elevation. At this stage, it does get a bit easier. Um, this point is on AB, so just do track that. It's the only way you'll make a small little slip at the, at the end of it all. And this point is on CD. So that is there. And that means our shortest horizontal distance is just this little guy here. Now, when you're drawing this yourself, these are really, really sensitive to any mismatches in the angles and so on. So if yours looks a little bit different, different from this one, don't freak out. It's quite possible for that to be about half the size with a tiny fraction of an angle difference here. So just double check that you're tracking them all correctly and it all works out fine. So there we are, shortest horizontal distance between two skew lines.